Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Hello everyone, welcome to Prime Time Local News. We have a really exciting show for you uh, tonight. Uh, we're talking how much of your holiday shopping have you gotten done uh, so far as it's December. <laughs> we're procrastinators, we're learning. Yeah, I haven't done any yet and it's not good. I should probably do that, especially if I want to order anything online. I think now it's probably too late to yeah, get it in Yeah, especially with the backlog so, with uh, Canada Post yeah. with the... Uh, the situation that happened in there, mall so. shopping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a very last minute person. I have not started anything. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I'm going to get anyway. Oh, so uh, <laughs> there we go. Well, we're going to have that conversation here on Primetime Local News. You still have time to weigh in. But first, let's go check in with our Brett Holden. I'm here at the Sheepskin Loft, where today we're going to be talking about some of the trends here for the holidays, including this uh, beautiful <laughs> plaid that they have here, as well as some of the footwear that they have, and some of the, the uh, furs as well, including one beautiful wrap made out of alpaca fur. We'll have a little bit more coming up here from here at the Sheepskin Loft, but let's head back into the studio and see what's going on there. Great, thank you so much, Brett. Well, frustration is starting to run high for citizens in the border city as the snow falls and the city isn't responding. This weekend, Lloydminster saw its first major snowfall of the year, which caused a lot of stress for drivers. Well, it's it snowed about uh, you know Saturday evening, early morning, and and uh, I was out by noon on Sunday, and none of the roads were cleared. In fact, all day Sunday, I didn't see a blade down anywhere um, and then Monday morning I find out uh, when people people are in rush hour traffic they're actually uh, having to follow plows and it's backing up traffic completely so the consensus is that the effort and timing of the removal is just not there and that the city needs to be more proactive and prepared I mean when you make budgets you you, you count on the fact that it could snow Sunday or, could, or Saturday or Friday night and you would have to have people on call to be able to come in and, and clean clean streets that just makes sense to me so mayor albert spoke to primetime local news and explained how there is a difference between snow removal and snow clearing once we get to a point that it becomes a public safety concern raised by our protective services through discussions with our operations team we will commence with a full snow clearing if required i remind taxpayers we budgeted for 1.3 million that's our expectation we know that's approximately what it's going to cost if we do that in February, as an example, and then we've got that much snow, and we get another major snow all of March, for some reason or another, Mother Nature says we're going to give you more snow and gives us another foot, we're going to have to find $1.3 million. Mayor Alberts explains that priority roads have been plowed and downtown should be taken on this evening. So downtown, we'll see downtown snow removal starting tonight because there's nowhere to plow the snow downtown. If you put it on the sidewalks, you won't be able to get to your favorite business. We appreciate that. The city understands the frustration and asks for your patience. Now we're going to send it back to Brett Holden, who is at Sheepskin Loft today. I'm joined here by Colina now. Colina, let's talk about some of the, the plaid that you have in the stores because once we look around a little bit, there's a lot of it around us. We do, we have a lot of plaid pajamas. Um, we have some for him, her, and the whole family so everybody can match for Christmas. So we have like the onesie bare cheeks here and then we have like two pieces or flannel or house coats. So we can actually suit the whole family up to look the same in matching pajamas for Christmas morning. So it's something that really people look forward to getting at Christmas time. So uh, let's talk about maybe some of the ones that are flying off the shelves right now. Um, the plaid coats are something that's really popular right now um, because they're light, but they're warm. And so it's something that people can put on and still um, look good and be warm all at the same time. And they can run out and get their Christmas tree in their plaid. <laughs> and what about uh, your favorite ones that you have here in store? Um, my favorite are the onesies. I have them and my whole family does, my grandchildren and my children. We all put them on. Some people might not like to, but we all do it just because, so it's fun. Perfect. We'll have a little bit more coming up from the Sheepskin Loft, but first let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them there. 
All right, thank you so much, Brett. Uh, bit of a cooler day today, uh, but we did see some sunshine, which was a nice change. Minus eight currently here in the border city with some clouds rolling in and uh, feeling more like minus 16 out there once you factor in that wind chill. Looking to our satellite radar, quite a bit of activity coming in from the west. Shouldn't really hit our area anything severe, but we could see a couple of flurry activity overnight and then none for the rest of the week. Uh, no watches and warnings currently in effect, which is nice. Looking to our uh, map now, minus eight here in the border city, a little bit warmer at minus seven in Cold Lake. Also good to be seeing some of that uh, snow activity, about a 40% chance I could see some of that starting overnight, possibly lingering on until tomorrow. Minus three for Athabasca, minus three in White Court, minus four for Jasper, and then over on the uh, Saskatchewan side, minus 12 in North Battleford, minus 10 in Saskatoon, and currently sitting at minus nine in Melfort. North Battleford currently seeing uh, some light flurry uh, activity on and off throughout the area as it makes its way there. Minus 10 overnight and then tomorrow overcast and minus nine. Cold Lake currently at minus seven, dipping down to minus 13 overnight, and that's when we could see some of that flurry activity possibly start and continue into tomorrow with a high of minus 10. Minus eight right now here in the border city overnight. Like I said, we could see some of that uh, precipitation come into play as it makes its way from the west. And then tomorrow, partly cloudy, a little bit of sunshine, minus 10 for the high, minus 12 for the low. We are expecting wind gusts up to 50K tomorrow, so it is gonna feel like minus 20 in the morning with that wind really hitting hard. So it is going to be a cool and windy start to the day. Minus 12 on Thursday and then minus 10 with a low of minus 18 on Friday. I'll have more details and a look at your seven day forecast coming up a little bit later. Welcome back. Well, just as a good pie starts with the crust, the beauty of a good cake begins with the decoration. Gerard Lampau discovers the art of putting the icing on the cake. There you go. You got yourself a rosette. I used to, like, when my grandma would bake with me, we would always, like, afterwards decorate the, like, the cupcakes or cakes. And then that was, like, really fun to me when I was little. So then now I do it again. Nine-year-old Ron McLeod has two years in 4-H and is doing cake decorating this year. The group's leader has had her kids in 4-H for the last three years. Most kids have an interest in cooking and or baking, and so I think there was a lot of excitement when they found out, because this is our first year having a cake decorating. Um, we had canine and outdoor living and things like that in the past, but... Um, it was really exciting, I think, for kids to just to learn different techniques. Bender is actively involved in cake decorating and selling cakes. She knows just how much her kids get excited. You get to make the icing and you get to decorate them and then later you get to eat them. You just push it down and then you lift up a little and you go around and around enough to fill the entire cupcake Whoa. up. Whoa. So I just think it's exciting for them to think of that they can create something and learn these different techniques that even some adults don't necessarily know how to do. So it's something that they feel some pride about and there's a lot of interest in it. So It's Bender's first year as a leader. I was asked specifically to do it um, and I just the reason why I accept it is just because it's such a good opportunity for the kids. Um, living in a small town, there's not always a whole lot for our, to put our kids in, or if we if we do have something to put them in, it's often traveling to Meadow Lake or Cold Lake or Pierce Land or whatever the case. So it's nice to have something right here in town. Whoa. The program is so great. Um, it's not just about the activities, but there's also um, meetings, like they have president, vice president, they elect, um, they do business meetings, they take minutes, they do public speaking, they go to different events. It's just such a great program for kids. You should do this. This is fun. Like, I've been in it, and it's really fun. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. That's it for your egg news. Sports is next, but first we'll take a look at your egg prices. Every member of the City Centre Autobody team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair techniques. 
Taking a look at your local sports now, the Lloydminster Bobcats enjoyed their most lopsided win of the season, a 7-1 victory over the Calgary Canucks. However, the real victory was outside of competition. And in this week's Beyond the Boards, Josh Ryan looks at the Bobcats' annual teddy bear toss. Two plays, Matt cutting into the slot, fire, score! A few minutes into Saturday's contest, Ethan Mack scored his first goal of the season and play was halted for the time-honored tradition of clearing hundreds of teddy bears off the ice. There was enough fans to fill the ice with teddy bears. I thought that they did a good job of bringing out enough and I thought it was pretty loud after that. The event is a popular pastime for hockey teams across the country with the Bobcats making it their official community give back weekend before the holidays. It's not always the best for a lot of families because they don't have uh, the financial ability to, to, uh, to do the things that most families get to do and, and it's always good to help out with whether it's something little like a teddy bear toss or, or donating things. It's an endeavor that means a lot to the players. It's important to, for us as a team and for us as people to uh, show support to these families who, who can't afford to have a good Christmas. In addition to all of the teddy bears, warm clothes, kids toys and more than $700 of food for the Salvation Army was also raised. It's not only just the teddy bear toss, they'll add the food bank things and, and clothing and stuff like that uh, in because uh, teddy bears only go so far. And the toss was made a little bit sweeter as a part of a Bobcats win. Fun thing to be involved in and for the fans and for the players and it was a good turnout and Macker got the goal there so that was good, it was first first time getting that. Josh Ryan, Primetime Local Sports. <clears throat> Beyond the Boards is brought to you by City Centre Auto Body. At City Centre Auto Body, they can fix anything. Now on both sides of the border. The most wonderful time of the year is coming up and the World Juniors. And with that, Canadian Hockey has announced their World Junior Selection Camp roster. And one addition is a household name in the Lloydminster area. Our Brett Holden has more. Boxing Day is a notable day for hockey fans everywhere because it is the start of the World Junior Championships. And this year, the Canadian squad could include Lloydminster's own Ty Smith. It would definitely mean a lot to me to um, be able to represent Canada at the World Juniors. The fact that the tournament's in Canada, I think, makes it kind of that much more special out west in Vancouver and Victoria. Should be, should be great crowds and a great event. Smith says this opportunity is a goal he had set for himself since a young age. That's something I've watched on TV kind of growing up my whole life, so it's obviously been a goal of mine. I think it's kind of a goal for every kid growing up in Canada playing hockey, so it would be really special if I could make that team. This year would not be the first time a Lloydminster product made the team. For the last two tournaments, former Lloydminster Heat captain and current Ontario Reign defenseman Cale Clegg has anchored the back end for the Canadians, and Smith says Clegg is a guy he looks up to. I guess, yeah, we text kind of now and then, see how we're doing and how things are going, but yeah, I guess he's, he's always kind of been there to help me out through, through things. Like, he kind of went through all the events that I've been fortunate enough to go through, so... Um, yeah, he's definitely a good guy, to, good guy to talk to, and he's been, a, I guess, a good role model for me kind of growing up. Puck drop for Team Canada's first game will be Boxing Day against Denmark. Brett Holden, Primetime Local News. And now we're going to send it back to Brett Holden, who is at Sheepskin Loft. I'm joined once again here by Colina. And Colina, you have a lot of uh, fur around yeah, us right now. Soft, warm, furry things, yes. From alpaca to sheepskin, and we sell like a lot of products that are natural fibers, and people are getting to be more into the natural things. And so the hard to buy for people, we have very, um, in, in, sorry. <laughs> We have very practical gifts and stuff for anybody that's that hard to buy for a person. So we've got the sheepskin rugs, which are great for in front of your fireplace or to just lay on, put them on the couch. Babies love them and they're just, they're soft and warm and it's just something that's a useful gift. Uh, so it's something that really appeals to people that are hard to buy for. And so we um, really like to help people figure out what to buy, like, and they come in here looking for different ideas, and we've got a lot of choices. We also have an online store, sheepskinloft.com, so people can go on our website and check out things on there as well. 
Perfect. And uh, you mentioned alpaca. Uh, I turned to my right here, and <laughs> there's this beautiful uh, uh, poncho. It's a wrap that you put over your shoulders, women put over their shoulders, just to take the chill off. So you can be sitting in your chair watching TV and you got a little chill on, so you put it on or you can go outside and go somewhere in it too. And it's very, yeah, beneficial to keep you warm. I feel like there's probably a lot of people who are going, that's a wrap, that's a wrap. <laughs> but uh, really quickly, uh, alpaca <laughs> fur. Alpaca fur is really soft and people like the fur because it's um, a beneficial fiber that isn't itchy. So like sometimes um, wool can be itchy like sheep wool, but um, sheepskin in, in itself is not um, uh, itchy and it's not something that people are usually allergic to. It's the wool from the sheep. So alpaca is, is good for people that might be uh, allergic to wool. Yes. Perfect. So we'll have a little bit more coming up here from the sheepskin loft. But first, let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them there. All right, thank you so much, Brett. Starting it off with this amazing photo. Look who we saw just outside of the station earlier today, Mr. and Mrs. Claus, as they get ready for uh, Christmas around here. Uh, very cool to see them out there. Uh, Temperature-wise, we're not sitting too bad. Sitting at uh, minus 8, feels like minus 16 out there. 40% chance we could see some flurry activity again tonight, possibly lingering on into the morning. And that's the same story for Cold Lake and Bonneville, also Lac La Biche. But a 40% chance there as well. We could see some flurry activity, but nothing major like we've been seeing in the last uh, few days here. St. Paul sitting at minus 8 currently. A minus 3 in Vegreville, also in Edmonton. Over on the Saskatchewan side, Sitting at minus 8 in St. Walberg, minus 9 in uh, Maidstone, and then currently at minus 12 in North Battleford. Light flurry activity uh, there as well. Over uh, as we move, sorry, up north, minus 8 in Laloche, minus 8 also in Buffalo Narrows, minus 11 currently in South End, minus 10 for Fort McMurray, and a little bit warmer as we move down the map, minus 5 for Grand Prairie. And then as we look down south, uh, definitely much, uh, much more mild temperatures there. Minus 2 for Lethbridge, minus 7 in Banff, minus 4 in at Calgary currently sitting at minus 12 for Moose Jaw and minus 11 degrees currently in the Queen City. As we look to our numbers tomorrow, we are getting into that uh, cold snap for at least the next uh, three days there. It's going to be a windy start to the day. We could see some wind gusts reaching up to 50 kilometers an hour. So it is going to be quite cool with that wind chill feeling like minus 20 in the morning, reaching a daytime high of minus 10, minus 11 for uh, Maidstone there, minus 9 tomorrow in North Battleford. Cold Lake going to be seeing minus 10 tomorrow as well. Same with Pierceland, minus 8 in Lac La Biche, minus 11 in Bonneville, and then minus 10 for St. Paul. So bit of a cool start, minus 12, but it's going to feel like minus uh, 20 there in the morning with that uh, wind with those, those strong wind gusts minus 12 over recess that's the same over the lunch hour and then minus 13 uh, when the kids head home there and then looking to our seven day forecast bit of a cold snap until Friday minus 10 tomorrow minus 12 on Thursday minus 10 on Friday minus 18 for the low which is the coolest we are going to see factor in the wind going to feel much cooler but minus 25 there then we start to warm up minus 9 on Saturday even warmer above the seasonal average as of Sunday. So minus five there, minus 12 for the low. And then look at that, a nice minus one and some sunshine to start off your work week on Monday. And then Tuesday, a high of minus five with a low of minus nine. And now we're going to check in with Brad Holden at Sheepskin Loft. Joined once again now by Colina. And Colina, you guys have no shortage of mugglocks. No, we've got like a huge selection. In Manitoba Mucklucks, we have the hugest selection in Western Canada. So we have lots in stock and we're ready to help you fit you, make sure that you get the right size for yourself if you're buying them for you or for um, your loved one. And if it's a gift, we're happy to do exchanges so we can help you guess. Uh, we carry two different suppliers, uh, mucklucks, and Manitoba Muckluck is one of them. And so we have short, tall, uh, we got them all. 
and fur, no fur. We've got something for men and women. And we also carry a line of Laurentian Chief too, and they're made in Canada. So they have different colors than the Manitoba and they have a different bottom than the Manitoba. So it's a large variety and they're warm and cozy with real sheepskin inside. Uh, and then you can also wear a nice warm wool sweater as well. So you can come into our store and check them out or look online, sheepskinloft.com. Perfect. And uh, you spoke about cozy uh, and talking about cozy. Let's talk about your uh, slippers as well. We have moccasins, we have real sheepskin slippers. So we have definite men's slippers and women's too. So we can help you select the right kind for your feet or for your loved ones. And they're really cozy and thick and they um, are something that's warm when you have chilly feet. <laughs> and talking about cozy, I, I love cozy and I mean mixed with that wrap that we were talking about a little earlier that would be an awesome combination well we'll have a little bit more coming up from the sheepskin loft but first let's head back into the studio and see what's going on with them there All right, well, as Brett is at the Sheepskin Loft looking for some good gift ideas, we are procrastinating. <laughs> uh, that was our question of the day. How much of your holiday shopping have you done? Uh, we put out a poll with a couple of uh, options here. So 38% say you're over halfway done, 14 say less than half done, 10% say I am finished, and 38% saying uh, that they have not started yet. And I am with you that 38% because, uh, yeah. yeah, I keep it till the very last minute. That 10% who's already done, who are these people? That's uh, Eric, crazy. Eric, <laughs> here in the building, waited. Oh, really? He said uh, wow. he's already done because it takes time <laughs> to think of good gifts. And it yes, does. it does, yet I don't do it. I know. Everyone's yeah. getting a candle this year. Yeah. <laughs> that's, how, that's what we're getting. You get a candle. <laughs> you get a candle. Just pull it's in not, an Oprah with I candles. Uh, yeah. yeah, pretty yeah. impressive, the most of you. <laughs> a couple of the comments are saying, uh, I'm just giving out love this year. There and you I go. Feel, that's what I should give out. Just my love. Love and positive vibes. There you my go. Everyone's like, no. getting positive <laughs> vibes for Christmas this year. Uh, uh, awesome. Uh, on the positive vibes are our pets of the day. Let's take a look at those. Look at this. This is uh, Monster right in the Christmas spirit. Right in Christmas cheer already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was <laughs> sent to us by Jennifer. Thanks for sending that one in. This is Roxy who is eyeing up those hot dogs. Mm -hmm. So am I, Roxy. That was sent to us by Lori. Thanks for sending that one in. Next up, we have Cheesecake Aww. with the best little coat on. It's a little hood. <laughs> so cute. That was sent to us by Melissa. Thanks for sending that one in. Next up, we have Sheffy. Very cute cat yeah. there. That was sent to us by Brenda. Thanks for sending that one in. And then last but certainly not least, this amazing photo of Alaska. That so was sent great. to us by Mitzi. If you would like to see your pet here on Time Time Local News, send us a photo. Just include their, your pet's name. And uh, if you do see them on the show, you will be entered to win a $50 gift card to the Woodminster Pet Pad. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. We are joined today by two fabulous authors. This book is called Girl, It's Not You, It's Definitely Him. And let me tell you, it is a fabulous book. We have Megan Edwards and Janet Reynolds with us today. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. This book was the highlight of my night when I got it. Oh, I love that. Thanks for reading it. How did this idea come about? Uh, well, Janet and I met on the set. Well, we were auditioning for the TV show First Dates Canada, and we kind of became friends and just realized that we both have a lot in common in the dating department. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we were dating at the time, and we had some really epically bad dates, and I had kind of, every time I came home from a date, I was doing voice notes and just recording all what happened because I just couldn't believe it. And every time I came home, I was like, oh, why is that happening? And then I just, <laughs> yeah. Because John was on Netflix. We so, felt like we should write it down because we assumed that it can't be just us. It has to be a lot of other women, too. And it was. Yeah. After we interviewed a lot of our friends and family and 
50 stories later and made up a whole book. And there were still more after that. So yeah, not all 50 stories are ours. <laughs> yeah, no, not. Thank you. I was going to ask that. I was wondering how many actually came from you guys. Um, it, this book is so relatable. Are you looking at maybe doing a second one because there's been such a good response? I mean, even anybody I've showed it to has been like, oh yeah, I've got a story. So do you think this could be a whole series? Once we make a million dollars <laughs> off of the first book, yes, definitely. definitely. Um, it, it's hard because we are self-publishing authors. So when you self-publish, you have to pay for everything. You have to pay for the editing, the design of the interior and exterior of the book. Even printing the book, you have to pay for it all. So mm -hmm. it is quite pricey. And I think if we had a, a publisher, you know, like a, a massive publisher that wanted to sign us that. or anything, <laughs> um, then yeah, I would I would love to write more books. The it process just, itself is super fun. And we mm -hmm. have so many people reaching out now, even some men that are like, we want to put our stories in there. And so that, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So you could, in essence, do another series, but do it from the other side of things, where it's the guy's stories about women. Boy, it's not you. It's <laughs> definitely her. <laughs> yeah, we're not sure if we like that, but we'll see. Yeah, you never know. Anything's possible. I mean, lots of people have had bad dates, and we have had people come to us and be like, it's not just the girls that have bad dates. And we're like, we know, but we know about the female side yeah. of it. So that's what we write about. But it would be cool to do something about the men's side of it, too. Yeah. Now, it seems like this is something that, that, you know, as you mentioned, is a fun project. Where do you guys go from here with this? I know you, you're joking about making a million dollars, but have you started on some other projects already? <laughs> Actually, we, uh, we're signing soon with a production uh, team that works out of Vancouver and L.A. Um, we have a signing a contract because they're going to be shopping it around to some um, showrunners and screenwriters and stuff like that. So and networks and that sort of thing. Potentially could be something on film or TV one day. And did you guys, either of you, actually end up uh, making the cut in the first date's show itself? Yep. Yeah, we were both on the show. And how did it turn out? Or do I, I guess <laughs> it's probably one of the stories in the book? No, we actually didn't write about that because the dates were not terrible. No, not at all. Actually, they, it was, mine was really fun. Yeah, mine was pretty fun too, but um, they just didn't work out. So it wasn't juicy enough to write about really. Right. Juicy um, enough for TV. And yeah. Laugh. Yeah. The editing made it juicy yeah. enough for TV. <laughs> um, but it was, you know, they weren't bad enough to write about. The story would be pretty lame, I think, if anybody read it. Yeah. It's more fun to watch. Definitely. You should watch it. Yeah. And have you guys had quite a good response to the book itself, though? Yeah, yeah, we've had a lot of really good feedback. A lot of people, I mean, especially the females who have been on horrible dates, have been right. like, oh, my God, like, I have stories for you. And I'm like, we asked you for your story a year ago, and you didn't <laughs> want to give it to us. Because I think sometimes no one actually believes you're going to do what you actually say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are like, oh, yeah, cool, cool idea, book. But I don't think anyone actually realized we were – actually going to write the book so yeah the response has been great and i actually do think that if we did write another book people would have uh some stories for us for sure all right well thank you so much for joining us ladies we are out of time just uh where can everybody get this if they wanted to order it where's the best place to go um you can order it online you can go to amazon.com.ca um indigo.ca yeah any if you go into any kohl's checkers or indigo store because we don't have it in alberta or saskatchewan just yet um you can just type in the name of the book in the computer system and order it into that that store specifically to yep. do that. okay perfect well it would make a great great christmas gift that's for sure so Absolutely. once again, thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. I really appreciate it. We'll make sure to post the link on our social media as well to get people ordering this because it's just, like I said, it was one of those books that I just couldn't put down. And unfortunately, some were relatable as well. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time for this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, guys, let me tell you, I am warm and cozy. I have my one mitten on. I uh, I couldn't find the other one. I also have my plaid house coat on and my nice warm toque. And thank goodness that we are here in the footwear section because here at the Sheepskin Loft, they have the largest selection of mucklucks in store here. We also talked a little bit about some of the, the trends that are coming off the shelves like crazy here, including one alpaca fur um, wrap 
that I didn't even know was a thing. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for joining me here. Let's head back into the studio and see what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is quite the outfit, Brett. I love it so uh, we know much. exactly what we're getting him if we pull his name for yeah. Secret Santa. 100%. Oh, gosh. We Those love it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Anyways, that's all the time we have. We'll see you here tomorrow on Primetime Local News.